In this presentation, we're going to see two examples of editable motion trails. Motion trails provide a visual representation of keys right around your animated models, letting you adjust timing, keys, tangent, and position of animation directly in the viewport. When we play back our animation, you'll see that we have some motion capture data that's been applied to a human IK rig, and we want to use editable motion trails to help us fix this foot that passes through the hovercraft. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just grab the IK handle on this foot and create a new animation layer so that whatever changes we make will be non-destructive. Now we can create the editable motion trail. We'll bring the options up for this and I want to set my pre and post frames to a value of 50 so this motion trail will be on screen around my character for basically 100 frames. We'll also increase the trail thickness to something kind of fat like a value of 4 and we'll go ahead and create it. So now as I scrub through my time slider you can see that editable motion trail sort of bleeding on and off based on my current frame and we get this really clear representation as to where that foot's going. You can also see all the subtle detail that that motion capture has. So what we want to do is just modify a slight tweak of this foot as it passes over the hovercraft. So we'll set a keyframe where the foot lands, we'll rewind our time a bit to where the foot takes off and set another keyframe, and we'll finish off by setting a third keyframe right where that foot's passing through the hovercraft. As I bleed back my animation a bit here, you'll see that I can grab those keyframes directly on that motion trail and begin repositioning them in my viewport. So if you think about what we're doing here is we're just modifying this dense motion capture data with three simple keyframes. The editable motion trail lets me see exactly where that's going and you can see that we still are preserving all that subtle detail that the motion capture has. The other thing that's kind of cool about this is because we've done this on an animation layer I can turn on and off the effect simply by enabling the layer. I can also start to adjust the weighting and you'll notice that the editable motion trail respects the animation layer weighting properly. So no matter what I'm doing, I'm always getting a nice visual representation as to where that foot's going to go, regardless of what attributes I have set in my animation layers. The other thing that's really kind of cool about this is because we're doing this on top of a human IK control rig, I still have that full power of the human IK solver at my disposal. So if I take this editable motion trail and I push it back to an area where that limb can't actually make it, I can just go into the attributes for the IK handle for that leg and start to dial in a little bit of pull. So this will let the energy travel past the body part and start to use that full body rig that we saw in the previous demos. So as I start to increase the pull value, you can see that my foot has the ability to reach past that body part and actually make it to that editable motion trail, even if it's really far back over the end of the ship. Obviously that doesn't look that realistic, so we'll just push it back to where it sort of was. So by combining human IK with editable motion trails and animation layers, we have a really powerful set of tools when it comes to manipulating motion capture data inside of Maya. The next example that we're going to do is looking at how we can use editable motion trails on the spaceship. So let's go ahead and create the motion trail for this. We'll bring up the options. In this example, I don't want to have pre and post frames, so I want the motion trail to be on for my whole time slider. And we'll make the trail thickness a little bit less. We'll also show the frames, and we'll just create that. So it's important to realize that the motion trails inside of Maya are just nodes. So any of the attributes that you set on one motion trail can be unique for it. So in this example, we'll have this guy become a different color. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some of the interactive controls on the motion trail that we have in the viewport to start adjusting timing information and tangent information. I'm going to bring up the graph editor, not because I want to use it to, to manipulate this curve, I just want to have it up so you can visualize what I'm doing in the viewport and how it affects the keyframes and the tangents in the actual graph editor. So let's go ahead and get that graph editor up. And for this example, I'm going to switch over to out of the classic Maya graph editor into the unified graph editor. This graph editor is consistent across media entertainment products, so if you work in Macs or Motion Builder, you'd have the exact same graph editor. So if you're jumping from app to app, it actually makes it a little bit easier to work with. So what we have here is we've got this, uh, this zoom layer. And on this zoom layer, we've got uh, obviously three function curves for X, Y, and Z, and that really is the positional information for this, for this ship's movement. And notice that I've got this kind of weird spike in there. So what I want to do is I want to smooth that out a little bit. And to try to do that with, by adjusting tangents in my graph editor, it's really kind of hard because you're trying to balance you know, X, Y, and Z to kind of shape this overall effect. So inside of Maya now, we have the ability to just right mouse click on any of the editable motion trails and simply turn on the in and out tangents in the 3D viewer. So now when I select this, edit, this keyframe, I can just grab those tangents and begin positioning them. So you can see how simply it is for me to go ahead and modify the shape or, or change the overall position of what these changes are doing in the graph editor, but essentially I'm changing the shape of that curve in my 3D view. It's a really awesome tool. The other thing that we can do with the editable motion trails is we can start to adjust the weighting of these tangents, basically the timing. Are we going to have fast ins or fast outs? 
and we can do that with these things called timing beads. So all I have to do is again right mouse click on top of the editable motion trail. In this example, bring up the timing bead. So we'll say show the timing bead in for this keyframe. So you can see that I have little X's going down that key curve. Those X's represent every single keyframe. So if I grab the timing bead and I start to expand them out, what I'm doing is I'm scaling out my tangent. So you can see here I'm scaling those tangents out. So essentially I'm getting a slow out. So I'm going to get more keyframes stacked up at the end of this curve. If I take them and push them the other way, it's going to accelerate the curve. So you'll, those keyframes will start to space out. So I'm going to have a fast end now. So again, what we've tried to do with the editable motion trails is bring the controls that you'd be doing down in the graph editor up into the viewport to make them really easy to access and make them really fast to work with. So the last thing that we're going to look at is the modify attributes. So if I go into modify keys, I can start adding new keys simply by clicking on it, and then obviously I could start repositioning that. I can also go into modify keys to start adjusting the overall keyframe value. So if I go back into modify and I hold down my shift key and start to swipe here, you can see that I get tick marks that represent every keyframe, and I'm actually just changing the position of where that key lives in time. So I'm not changing the positional information, I'm changing the timing information for it. So the last thing that we're going to do is go ahead and accelerate the whole animation a little bit by using my region select tool. So this is a very fast tool that allows me to grab a bunch of curves and I can use that to start moving those curves around or I can use it to go ahead and start to just do some basic timing. So I could either scale them or in this example I'm going to scale the time down as opposed to scaling value. So we'll just kind of compress this down so that my, my ship flies through this very fast. So that was just a quick example of how we can use editable motion trails to interact with our keyframes directly in our viewport.